Human trafficking is the unlawful act of transporting or coercing people in order to benefit from their work or service, typically in the form of forced labor or sexual exploitation. It's a heavy topic, and not one most of us like talking about, but talk we must. Because the more we talk and spread information, the less room there is for this criminal act to flourish. So that conversation is part of this Sunday's Jamaica Magazine Agenda. I'm your host, Theodore Henry. There is more on the way, so do keep watching. What a way you full up our roots and culture. <laughs> that was in Jamaica 60. <laughs> Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. A holy way of celebrating it. <laughs> they said the people, them, you know, them come here, you know. But you see, when our people decide, say the other people, them free paper, bono, them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, panta, collect you know? medal. I'm on top. The celebrations are slated to begin on January 1st, 2022. Organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, we have more in this report. I am on site and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app to know what it pre. Why it pre? <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration. Yeah. If you don't know the app, to get the updates then. It's now time to get the facts on human trafficking. Just how prevalent is it in our country? What kind of support's available for victims? And what's being done to capture and penalize the perpetrators? We have the answers. Welcome to Get the Facts, the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm your host, Enthros Campbell. Today we'll be talking about human trafficking. And our resource person is manager of the Trafficking in Person Secretariat, Mrs. Shani Russell Robinson. Mrs. Robinson, welcome to the program. So good to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Great. Let us start with the definition. What exactly is human trafficking? You know, we hear it and we say, boy, that is far-fetched. That is moving stuff. Tell us exactly what, what is trafficking in person. Firstly, human trafficking is defined by our local legislation, which is the Trafficking in Persons Prevention, Suppression, and Punishment Act of 2007. Section 4 of the Act states that Trafficking in person is the receipt, harboring, transportation of a person through various means of threat, use of force, fraud, or other deceptive means, or even abduction for the exploitation of that person. So in a nutshell, what it is, it's the exploitation of persons for another person's benefit. Right. Basically, and, that's what human trafficking right. is. Right. And this is usually against the person's will, right? Right. right. Against yes. the consent of the so, person. So who's most at risk? So most at risk is our our children. So our children. Our boys, mm -hmm. Yes. Our boys and our young girls are mostly at risk for human trafficking and women because the Palermo Protocol, which is the United Nations Protocol yes. to suppress trafficking in persons is known as to suppress trafficking in persons, especially women and children. So basically children and women are mostly at risk, but males are also at risk. Yes, yes. Okay, so but Jamaica has been making some strides right in this area. Tell us about how well are we doing? Where are we in terms of the ranking? Right. So Jamaica has been making strides. We are at tier two based on the annual United States State Department Trafficking Persons Report. They have three tiers, which is tier one, tier two, tier two watch list, and tier three. So it's really four. So we are currently at tier two, and we have been at tier two for the past five years. We're striving to achieve a tier one, but there's still some that needs to be done. Um, but currently, we are doing our best. However, we can improve the, upon what we have been doing. 
for example, we have been looking at the laws. We are making changes to the laws, even as we speak, to amend it so that the penalties are even more stringent yes. to deter traffickers from All right, so we're at tier two. How long have we been there? And, and were we at any other level before? Yes. So we are at tier two since 2016. Right, and, and we were at tier two watch list prior to 2016. All right. Can you give me so some data? Watch list yes. is just below tier two. And I think we were even at tier three at one point in time, which is a long time ago. Right. How do we get to the tier one or two or three? What, um, what, what numbers do we have to have? And tell us a little bit about the data as it relates to our situation. So, okay, so tier one is the highest you can get to on that level. And that's the next tier that we're striving to achieve. So we're just below tier one, which is tier two. Um, how do you get to tier one? You have to be in full compliance in terms of preventing trafficking persons prosecuting trafficking persons and protecting victims of trafficking in persons within your nation's borders. So there are certain requirements that you have to meet and certain minimum standards that the country on a whole have to meet. So for example, even our laws, just by looking at our laws, our laws need to meet a certain threshold. So if when assessed, if when assessed, they, they see that there are some gaps so for example, it has been said that some of our laws are not stringent enough. And so that is the reason why we're even amending the law as we speak. So for example, we are removing the options of a person to be fined alone when convicted of trafficking in persons. Because if convicted of trafficking in persons, as it stands, the law says you can be sentenced to an imprisonment and or fine. So which means you can be fined alone. So we are now amending it to say you can be sentenced to imprisonment or imprisonment and fine. Right. So there are certain things that we have to meet, such as that. Although, for example, there, there are other aspects of it in terms of protection of victims to ensure that all their rights and their needs are met in terms of for example, accommodation. If is it that they require such, we have to provide counseling, repatriation services if they are non-nationals and things like those. There are a whole gamut of things that we need to meet in terms of to effectively reach another tier. And for example, we're even looking at another shelter to accommodate victims because we currently have one shelter, but it can only accommodate female victims. So okay. we are looking at a second shelter right. to accommodate male victims. Right. So as soon as we get those things off, I think we will successfully reach that tier. Right. So are we seeing much of this crime here in Jamaica? Yes. I will say yes. For example, based on the statistics, we have to date rescued since 2010, which is just over 10 years. We have rescued over 110 victims of trafficking. So meaning annually there are 10 victims rescued from trafficking in persons. And these 10 victims represent a tip of the iceberg because trafficking in persons is a very clandestine activity. It's a very hidden activity. It's not something that you just go out and readily identify. Right. So this is what we call underground activity. So if we are rescuing 10 victims for the year, meaning that there perhaps be 10 times that more who needs rescuing. So we know that it is happening. We currently have a few matters before the court. And uh, there I know that the police are actually investigating additional matters other than the ones that are before right. the court so that they can be brought before the court. So can you give us a profile of the victims? Are they mostly women? Are they mostly men? Are they mostly children in recent times? Right. So in recent times, most of our victims are children, unfortunately. So they are persons below the age of 18 years old. They are mostly females, which means girls. And the most forms of trafficking we are seeing is sexual trafficking or sexual exploitation. However, in recent times as well, males have been increasing. However, it's not at the same rate as, as the female, but we have seen an increase prior, um, as opposed to prior years. 
So I think the ratio as it stands now is possible six to four out of ten. Right. For a female. Yes. What do you do when you when you when you have rescued a victim from this, this, this circumstance? What do you do? The person goes back home. Tell us the process about the process. Okay. All right. So when we rescue a victim, by law, there are certain things that we are mandated to do as a government and as the National Task Force Against Trafficking in Persons and more so the Ministry of National Security, who chairs the National Task Force Against Trafficking in Persons. We have to coordinate the services, what we call protection services for this victim. So if a victim is rescued, we have to provide accommodation if is it that the person needs accommodation because some based on the nature of the case and sometimes they cannot go back home based on reasons and so we provide them with accommodation and this is why the shelter is very important we also provide them with counseling services because as you would imagine they would have gone through a traumatic experience yes. and so we employ the services of the victim services division under the ministry of justice to employ counseling and if it involves a child we also have to engage a child protection and family services agency to also step in and provide counseling and sometimes accommodation for that child we also provide medical assistance and this is why we also employ a multi-agency approach on yes. the national task force right because right so i was going to ask you about you you, right so tell me about you are now working on the on a, on a 2018 2021 um program tell me how is that going to combat the whole trafficking in persons how is that going and what what are some of the agencies that are included in in, in that work okay so our current plan of action is as you said 2018 to 2021 so yeah. it comes to a close at the end of this year yes and it is going yeah. fairly well as some of the things that we would have outlined within the plan of action is for example to amend the laws which we have gotten the approval of cabinet so it's just now for drafting instructions to be made we have also implemented our anti-trafficking persons clubs within schools so we have all, approximately 20 schools across the island who have engaged in this activity, who have executed um, plans within their schools and activities across their schools. So, for example, we have My Freedom Day. We also have World Trafficking Persons Day, celebra um, well, not celebrated, observed. commemorated. Right. Right. Commemorated or observed within these schools. Yes. And... So we have been doing fairly well in terms of executing the plan of action, but we have been hampered by the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, all right. We're going to talk about that. What is happening with you now as we go through this pandemic? So we're going to talk about that when we come back. We'll take a break now and we'll be right back. Human trafficking is modern slavery. It has many forms and faces. Men, women, and children of all ages, race, and class can become prey. They are exploited through the use of force, fraud, or coercion. They are controlled by another person, treated as property, and stripped of their rights. Human trafficking is modern slavery. Let's put an end to it. Welcome back to Get the Facts. We're talking with Mrs. Shanee Russell Robinson, who is manager of the Trafficking in Persons Secretariat. And we pick up the conversation now with how the task force has been doing in the whole, in the whole era of the COVID-19 pandemic. So, like many others, we have been affected by the pandemic in terms of going out on the ground because we follow the three Ps. And the three Ps in Trafficking in Persons is prevention, protection and prosecution yes and we consider the first fee which is prevention to be the most important because you know as we say in jamaica prevention is better, better than, than cure. cure and so a part of our prevention efforts is to go out and sensitize educate the public on what exactly is trafficking in persons and how they can protect themselves from traffickers and so in previous years prior to the COVID-19 pandemic we would have been going 
physically to spaces such as you know we have doing outside broadcast we do community engagement so we actually go underground we have talks with community members churches and those places we handle flyers and brochures and we also have town hall meetings and those sessions however due to the pandemic we now have to engage the internet or online platforms to conduct those sessions which we know technology has its, up, its pros and cons. Yes. And so sometimes we don't get the reach as we would like because, you know, not everyone has access to certain platforms or even just to the internet. But nonetheless, we have been doing webinars on trafficking in persons in our schools and even in our churches or any group that would have invited us into their space we continue to do those. So that is how we have been doing our prevention works. What What are some of the signs that we could, we should look out for for someone who is being trafficked? Some of the signs that persons can look out for or red flags are, yes. one, if when you see a person, the person cannot communicate for him or herself, and you know that the person is of their right mind and they are able to properly communicate on their behalf. However, a third party always insists on communicating for that person. This can be a means of control where the trafficker will insist on communicating on that person's behalf. So, for example, we've had a case where a victim turned up at a medical center and the victim was accompanied by the trafficker. However, in the doctor's office, the trafficker always insisted on speaking to the doctor and the doctor kindly asked the trafficker, you know, to step out and so that they could properly communicate with the victim because the victim, he knew that the victim could have communicated for herself, what the person always insisted. Yeah. So that is a red flag that, that persons flag, can yes. look out for. As well as if the person has untreated wounds, that is possible a sign of trauma and traffickers do not normally give proper medical care. Additionally, if the person is not in control of their finances, normally the trafficker as well control the finances of the person so they do not have access to their own money. And we also can say if they don't have access to their identification documents, because that is one thing that the trafficker mostly does is take away the identification document from the victim because this is also used as a means of control. Mm -hmm. So the person cannot freely move as well as if it's a child and the child is not in school, so you are in a community and you know that the child resides at a certain residence, however, you never see that child going to school. This can also be yes, a red yes, flag yes, as well. Yes. If I witness these signs, what shall I do? Well, for example, what does a doctor do? What does a neighbor do? So if you witness things like these, the first thing you should do is to call the police. And the police is the anti-trafficking in persons vice squad, commonly known as the AT vice squad within the Jamaica Constabulary Force. And you can call 119 and report the matter. However, you can call their direct line at 967-1359 and you will talk directly to an officer within the anti-trafficking in persons vice squad as they are tasked with investigating all suspected cases of trafficking in persons. So the doctor would similarly call the police and they will step in and investigate the matter. You know how it is in Jamaica, people are afraid to give this kind of information. Well, what, will, what will you say to persons who, are, who would really want to go but they're, they're afraid? Right. Okay, so if you're afraid, you can also call Crime Stop and report anonymously. So you can just call Crime Stop at 311 and give them the information. They will not call you back because they cannot call you back because they do not have your information. So you can also report anonymously at Crime Stop as well as you can report at the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA. Because I know some persons feel more comfortable in speaking to certain officers. So they can speak to a child um, care officer at the CPFSA and report matters. As well as I would say that over the years, our trend has been, we have not have such cases where persons' lives have been put at risk, who we have gotten tips from, because we are very confidential and we hold ourselves to the highest regard. 
and even if persons do not want to report to any of those agencies um, prior mentioned, they can call the Ministry of National Security, which is our office, and they can make the report as well. And we will do the referral to the police. Right. Okay. Earlier you spoke about um, giving some kind of support to the victim. How long is this process and how do you get the person back into his normal um, neighborhood, his normal um how, how they normally function before? Okay, so it's normally up to a year, but it's not strictly up a to a year. Mm -hmm. Because as we know that the cases sometimes take more than a year. And so if that case is brought before the court, we have to look out for that victim and provide the necessary counseling services for the victim as long as the case um, continues. And even after the case um, has finished, we continue to provide services to that victim if the need arises. So this trafficking in persons, human trafficking, is a real issue. What do you have to tell our audience before we, we wrap? So I want to say that one victim is one victim too many. And we must be our brother's keepers because we are all on this island and no man is an island. And if I have a child, I would like somebody to look out for that child. Or if I have siblings, I would like somebody to look out for that sibling. And so we have to look out for our neighbors, for our colleagues at work, for just the man on the road to see if we suspect something, do something about it. Because as our tagline says, be wise, open your eyes, spot them, stop them, and report them. That is one of the things that we have been grappling with, especially in human trafficking. The cases are really underreported. And if they're not reported, we cannot investigate the case and we will not catch the trafficker. So just exercise caution and due diligence, even when applying for a job or just meeting someone, please exercise caution. Thank you so very much. And there's so much more that we need to explore, but this is where the conversation must end for today. I'm sure we'll come back to you for some more time. Yes? And for more information on what the government is doing to combat human trafficking, please visit the website of the Ministry of National Security at mns.gov.jm or call them at 906 4908 221. You may also email them at notfatip at mns.gov.jm. Until next time, when Get the Facts brings you, as always, more important and useful information. I'm your host, Enthrose Campbell. Thanks for watching and take good care. Thank you so very much for being with us today. Are you being promised lots of money, trips overseas, marriage, gifts, and other benefits without strings attached? What of jobs with excellent salaries but require no experience? You could become a victim of human trafficking, modern day slavery, where you're forced to work or perform sexual favors. Remember, not everything that glitters is gold. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of human trafficking, call 811 or 1888 Protect. Be wise, open your eyes, spot them, stop them. A message brought to you by the National Task Force Against Trafficking in Persons. Earlier we explored the uncomfortable topic of human trafficking. As you would have learned, it does not discriminate by gender, age, nationality, or anything really. Unfortunately, that means children are too often the victims, just as they are for various forms of abuse. But you have a voice and a way to use it for reporting the victimization of our young and vulnerable. In fact, there's a dedicated helpline. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, has renewed its efforts to have a three-digit telephone number to replace the existing 10-digit line 888-PROTECT, assigned to the National Children's Registry, the NCR. The NCR operates as the main point of contact for persons making reports of child abuse, neglect and missing children. It also handles reports of child trafficking, which is handled by the National Task Force Against Trafficking in Persons, NATFATIP, 
But why was it so important for this renewed call to take effect and why now? We have always thought it, um, it would be easier if we have a three-digit number that children could easily remember. Now, in 2020, when we were all affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, um, we saw a significant reduction in the number of reports coming in. Um, we did not believe that it was a case where children were not being abused because, you know, most abuse takes place in the homes. So we wanted to reach out to children. Um, at that time, we were pushing our WhatsApp line. We were saying to children, if you um, feel unsafe, if you feel at risk, you can reach out to us on WhatsApp, you know, because WhatsApp is free. Um, and of course, we're encouraging persons to call our 888 Protect number. But you'd appreciate that 888 Protect is not so easy to remember, especially for young children. The time was right for us to um, launch a three-digit three -digit line um, that would be easy for children to remember, um, easy for everybody to remember. Still, the 888 Protect helpline has been in effect for quite some time now. So, what exactly will this new 211 line mean for its operation? So, the 888 Protect number is still in operation. What we actually did was put the 211 onto the 88 Protect, if that makes any sense. So, if you call either number, they both terminate at the same place. So, the calls will come into the same lines. But what we're hoping is that as time progresses, you know, more and more persons will become aware of 211 and we will eventually phase out the 88 Protect. And here's the best part about this new response to child abuse. There are designated officers who are armed with the right toolkit to manage these calls. So we already had a system um, at the National Children's Registry for manning the 888 Protect line. In addition to 888 Protect, we had a number of other lines that persons could call. So what we did was just to boost that system to ensure that when the calls come into 211, we would be able to handle them. So we have a set of trained registration officers, they're social workers, you know, um, who are equipped to handle the calls when they come in. They're trained in how to handle various types of callers. Um, they're trained with skills of assessment and they will do the necessary referrals to the investigating partners. These partners are required to initiate an investigation and provide the NCR with an update within three months. Furthermore, the NCR's contact center will be expanded to provide immediate psychotherapeutic response for children who may call for help. This is being done under the Public Sector Modernization Program through the ICT Expansion Program currently being rolled out by the Ministry of Finance's Transformation and Implementation Unit, TIU. Anyone in Jamaica, Madam Speaker, can take up their phone and dial 211. You can be a partner in carrying the message to rescue our children. And we do mean anyone, from any network, at any time. We actually, you know, met with the telecommunications providers, um, came to some agreement that this is how we'll be proceeding in the interest of the nation's children. So the 211 is completely free regardless of what network you're calling from. Our nation's children are our priority, and this is being reflected in the CPFSA's targeted programs and services to respond effectively to the needs of vulnerable children and their families. The 211 helpline is just the latest step in the right direction. If you know of or suspect that a child is being abused, reach out to the CPFSA or call 211. Time's up. Well, not really. The ever-ticking clock continues to chime, but there are just no more minutes to be spared for today's show. Fret not, though, we do this every day. So join us tomorrow and another informative Jamaica magazine will be unveiled. While you wait, pay us a visit on our social media pages or visit the JIS website or YouTube channel. Our year in review series wraps up this week, but not before we explore the contributions of foreign affairs and foreign trade tomorrow. Until then, I'm Theodore Henry, signing off and saying thanks on behalf of the entire production crew. See you next time. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.